I'm going to put several pieces of a prophetic puzzle together for you today. It may be a little too ambitious. If it is, I'll edit as I go. But it gives understanding for our times that we must have. And the reason that I'm pressing so hard with this information and revelation is because of the word of the Lord for the next couple of months leading to September. So this isn't a typical sermon. It is going to be one of the most prophetic uh, messages that I probably have given in quite some time, maybe ever, I don't know. And some of it uh, you may have to put on the shelf and pray about a while because we're, we're talking about spiritual matters, spiritual things. The kingdom of heaven is a spiritual kingdom, but it is real. Don't think imaginary when you think spiritual. Uh, God is a spirit, but he's real. Jesus is a, a spirit being, but he's real. Angels are spirit beings, but they are real. And the, the Hebrew and the Greek language, uh, original language of scripture tell us or teach us that the spirit is more real than the natural because the spirit is eternal and the natural is temporary. And so think more real today. We must hear what Holy Spirit is saying to us. Holy Spirit said in a prophetic dream that Dutch gave to us three weeks or so ago at the Ecclesia Hub meeting from Gina Golston, that we are to command the forward right now. And forward was like a forward in a book. The forward in a book sets up the chapters that are going to be revealed, the, the following chapters. In other words, declare the founding principles of the nation right now. Why? Because America has drifted off course from following the, uh, the ways that profit us. And we're following ways that do not profit. And they are ways that bring a reproach and will bring consequences unless there is repentance. Uh, because America has traded its glory for paths that lead us away from Almighty God in many cases. Now, the prophets have been declaring to us that a time of great shaking will now come as a result of some of the rebellion in our nation. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27 does describe a time when everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. At some point in the end time age, there will be a time when everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. But we have been told this time after time, and especially the last couple of months, we have been told, but you, the people of God, the born again ones, the heirs and joint heirs, are a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. It is a very real spiritual kingdom that is to affect the natural kingdoms of the earth. We have a spiritual government, yes, but it is to influence natural government. So we are part of a spiritual kingdom. It's not imaginary, it is real. We are a part of a true ecclesia, a spiritual parliament, a, a ruling and governing body, a real New Testament church, and we will not be shaken. Again, we've been told that repeatedly. Don't get shook. Don't fear the shaking that is promised. Stand strong and declare uh, God's word. Boldly command the forward as a great shaking occurs. Now, I'm not sure what this great shaking is, and I haven't heard any of the prophets describe it quite yet, although it's beginning. 
Perhaps it's some constitutional crisis. That's, that's my surmising. I think that might be a part of, uh, of this, a constitutional crisis or a crisis in uh, the presidency or perhaps uh, it could be some kind of war that's going to take place. I don't know. Perhaps it's something in the economy. But Holy Spirit said, a great shaking would come. Not just a shaking, but the word great in front of it. When Holy Spirit says a great shaking, we need to pay attention. It is a great shaking, he said, that will lead to a reset. Now remember back on June the 4th, I awakened on Sunday morning and I was very burdened for our nation and I was praying, um, this is before church, uh, probably from five o'clock in the morning until church time, just praying uh, because I was so burdened for the nation. And on that morning, I gave to you a prophetic word and a part of that word, I won't give it all today for time's sake, but a part of that word was that June, July, and August would lead us towards a reset that accelerates into September and then beyond. And there have been, there have been several prophetic words now that we have looked at from other prophets about something that is accelerating uh, accelerating forward in the month of September. Not that it's going to be completed in September, accelerated was the word. But again, don't get shook. It will lead to a reset of the nation um, to its covenant roots with our, our great God that, that America was founded upon. Now, as I thought about this prophetic word last Tuesday morning, which would have been July the 4th, and uh, as I was thinking about this and began to ponder a prophetic encounter that Holy Spirit reminded me of early Tuesday morning on July 4th, that I'll give you in just a moment, I, I in fact, was telling Carol about what Holy Spirit had just reminded me of this encounter. And about 15 minutes after talking to her, I received a, a text message from Prophet Clay Nash about a dream that he had had the night before uh, July 4th. And this dream gave great confidence to what I've been hearing and begins to speak into our times. The timing of this was absolutely perfect and it began to bring understanding that I'm, I'm moving into today. And that it was uh, Prophet uh, Clay was even more meaningful to me. Sometimes we say, you just can't make this up. Well, this is gonna be one of those. You just can't make this up because Holy Spirit is trying to give us meaning for our times, discerning of the times. Like the sons of Issachar, we have been told, you discern your times so you know what to do. Clay text uh, messaged me this. In my dream last night, the justice gate angel came and woke me. As I sat on the side of my bed, the angel said to me, tell the people that will hear what is coming cannot be stopped. That the prayers prayed now will become the push to deliver the nation. The prayers of now will cause the pain of the ultimate birth pain to be intense, but productive. Tell the people to breathe deeply and know that this which is bitter in your belly now will be sweet to your eyes. 
that which is bitter now will become sweet to your eyes. It'll become sweet later. What a word. These, these are very historic moments. We live at a hinge of history. Something has got to change. God is moving to change history. And he is moving us into a new era. What, what, has, what will be bitter, bitter at first, is going to become sweet to the eyes. So we have two months, July and August, to get some prophetic assignments accomplished before whatever this shaking is, before it accelerates. One, we are to command the forward. We've heard that. Two, we are to paint the borders, the Word of God said, uh, the borders of our states, the borders of our capitals and other places Holy Spirit will show us. Paint them with anointing oil, praying for protection, praying for revival, binding evil from entering in, commanding blessings. And now, uh, number three, uh, I want to press into today, we are to release angels that assist us by boldly proclaiming God's word. Remember, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14 says, angels are ministering spirits. Again, they are real beings. They're not imaginary beings. They are real. You, you, you can at times see them, and I have. Most of the time, you only see their effects. But angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to and with the heirs of salvation. The heirs of salvation would, of course, be the born-again ones. Angels are not heirs. We are heirs. They assist and minister to and with the heirs. Also, remember Psalms 103 and verse 20 tells us, angels listen for God's word to be voiced or declared, hearkening to them to assist in bringing them to pass. And of course, again, we are the ones who are the declarers of God's word or the voicers of God's word, doing so under Holy Spirit supervision. It's all under Holy Spirit. He's the boss. Doing so under Holy Spirit supervision and also doing so under the authority of King Jesus in his name. Now, I want to go back to June of last year, June 18, 22. It's about three weeks before July the 4th. And this past Tuesday, July the 4th, Holy Spirit began to remind me of this. And it's not something that I was even remotely thinking about. June the uh, Go back to June, just three weeks before July 4th. June last year, it was a Thursday morning. And I was going to Memphis, Tennessee to teach at Prophet Clay Nash's conference. And uh, I had been very sick, actually had been in bed with the flu for a couple of days and I, I got up to go to the airport to get on a plane and go to this conference. I didn't want to cancel it. I don't like to do that, and I've, I very rarely do. But uh, I get to the, the airport, I get on the plane, and there, there is no one in my row, which I was glad for, because I didn't feel good. And I thought, great, I can just, just relax. And this rarely happens that I go to sleep on an airplane because uh, I just don't sleep good on airplanes. But this day, I was so tired and sick that I just, I just laid back and I nodded off and I had a dream. 
And in this dream, I had gone to Washington, D.C. to pray on July the 4th. And in this dream, I was standing across the street from the White House, the entrance of the White House, in Lafayette Park, that is in front of, of the White House. It is a spot where I have been to pray for the nations many times. So I readily recognized where I was at. I've been there many times and I'm about to go again to pray for the nation. One of those times was about eight years ago uh, when my brother Dutch and I and Apostle um, Ken Malone went to Washington, D.C. to pray for the nation. And uh, Prophet Chuck Pierce had given us a gold stake. It wasn't real gold. It was a railroad, <laughs> a railroad stake. He painted gold. Uh, to go to D.C., Washington, D.C., stake it into the ground as a prophetic act and declare the nation will reconnect to its covenant roots and the nation will begin to pray for this disconnection. This, this so we had gone to D.C. to pray, carrying this golden stake. And of course, you don't carry a gold stake in front of the White House. So Dutch has it hidden under his coat. Well, it was pouring the rain and so we back up from the uh, fence and we back over into Lafayette Park at the spot where I now was in this dream. And we're standing under umbrellas because it's pouring the rain and we're praying for this assignment. We're praying for God to, to talk to us. We're praying for the nation. And uh, uh, after we prayed for a while, we thought maybe we're done and we looked at each other, are we done? Is this where we're, we're supposed, to, supposed to drive this stake somehow? Didn't feel that, but didn't feel we were done praying either. So we back up further into the park, away from people that were under umbrellas up by the gate, uh, or the fence of the White House, and we're just praying. And as we are praying, Lord, we don't feel like we're done. What do you want us to pray what are we supposed to proclaim here? As we are doing this, an elderly gentleman starts towards us, not where the people are. He's coming to us where we've backed away from everybody. And he's coming right at us. And I notice as he is coming, because Holy Spirit for, you know, for 15 years or so has taught me about how to see angels or identify them. I said, that's not an old man, that's an angel. And he was coming right towards us. And he did come right where we are under the umbrella. And he doesn't, doesn't engage with us. He doesn't talk. He just says one word six times. He said, mercy, 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 six times. And just kept walking. And Dutch turns, he wants to engage with him. And when, he turn, when we turn to look, he is gone. Anyway, we being the great, deep, spiritual men that we are, we deduced that we're supposed to pray mercy. So we did. And we declared mercy, and God gave us five years of mercy in this nation. And we began to talk for the next few months. Why did he... Why did the angel say mercy six times? Because a better biblical number would have been seven, the number of completion, the number of fullness. But he didn't. He said six. He said it six times. Why? We couldn't get any understanding of that. But then we had a conference at the Trump uh, Hotel there in D.C., and the first night, Clay Nash has a dream. And in the dream, he is standing in front of the Trump Hotel, and just off in the distance is the White House. And this old man comes to him that he identifies in the dream as an angel. And the angel says, go tell them that now I can say mercy 
seven times. And uh, we knew exactly what that was about. And again, God completed a cycle of mercy, giving us time, five years of it. It was an incredible experience, to say the least. And then we went on, uh, uh, we went over to, on this one, first assignment, we went over to the Supreme Court and drove the stake there. Well, I'm in Lafayette Park in this dream on the plane. And I'm looking out at the White House praying on the 4th of July in this dream. And I see a guy off to my right walking towards me. And this guy is carrying a tree trunk that is about one and a half feet in diameter and 12 feet long. And in this dream, I'm, I'm beginning to think, no human can do that. It's too heavy. It's just not possible. This must be an angel. And indeed, as he got closer, I could see that this was uh, a, an angel. It was a very big angel, very, very muscular. And I remember his eyes. His eyes looked very fierce, bold, very confident, but, but it wasn't scary to, to look at him. It was like, that's just, in this dream, it was like, that's just who he is. And he carried this huge tree trunk under one of his arms as he came towards me. And he comes up before me and stops. And again, I'm in Lafayette, Park right there. He comes up before me carrying this tree trunk, stops and just stares at me. And amazingly, I didn't feel any fear. It was like now I'm a part of this, this dream. And I finally said to, to this angel, why are you carrying that tree trunk? And he answered me like a soldier would talk. He said to me, sir, it's not, it's not a tree trunk, it's a battering ram, sir. And after a moment of pause, I then said, what are you going to do with it, soldier? Now I'm talking like a soldier in the dream. What are you going to do with it, soldier? And he said, there are four of us, sir. We are surrounding the White House to break down the protective barriers that Lucifer has built that are protecting the roots of Baal hidden inside of it. Baal, of course, is a demon god promoting the demon agenda. Now, that really spoke to me last Tuesday morning, and I, I'm remembering all this. It's the first time that I would ever have mentioned to me, and five months later would actually see four seraphim, at least four, assisting us in Washington, D.C. Seraphim are the most powerful angels a uh, powerful order of angels that there is. Of course, Michael and Gabriel are also seraphim. So uh, four seraphim besides Michael and Gabriel. Again, there are no angel gra graveyards. Angels are real. They are alive right now. Michael and Gabriel are functioning right now. Well, this angel that's carrying the battering ram was a seraphim, one of four. It's the first time, Tuesday was the first time I put that together. That will become significant and even more so next week. He said, there are four of us. We're surrounding the White House to break down the protective barriers of Lucifer that are protecting the roots of Baal hidden inside of it. 
Then I said in this dream, I said, why have you revealed yourself to me, soldier? And he said to me, sir, permission to proceed, sir. And in this dream, I said, soldier, proceed. And the plane landed and I woke up. And of course, in this dream, I'm representing the body of Christ. I'm representing the ecclesia. It's not about me. It's about the church and the ecclesia proclaiming proceed, proceed. Well, that night at the conference in Memphis, I, I gave that word. And after giving it, then Holy Spirit gave me a download of prophetic, a prophetic word that has been happening and now is in it's its fullest measure, I believe. It's like it's in its fullness here in July and in August. These mighty angels are assisting us in preparation for the shaking and for a supernatural reset. Not just these angels, but also government angels. Uh, reformation angels, angels of breakthrough, angels of war, justice angels, harvest angels, angels uh, of, of deliverance, angels of fire. That's the special forces angels, multiple divisions of angel armies that Holy Spirit has been activating on earth for the past 10 years or so. God has ordained a door of heaven for our times, releasing angel armies to be opened for us as Revelations 4 and verse 1 describes. It says that a door of heaven was standing open. A door of heaven was standing open. See, God can open doors of heaven. He can open windows of heaven. That door is now aligning with us in this era, this moment. It is a door, an open door for this new season, this time, this reset that is now beginning. And angel armies are flooding through heaven's portal to assist the word of the Lord to be accomplished. What door is being talked about by Holy Spirit. It's the door where angels ascend and descend that Jacob saw in Genesis 28, 12, and that Jesus talked about in John 1 and verse 5. Holy Spirit is saying to us in this time right now that that door is now open. Remember, in May, the prophetic word was a merger of heaven has begun and the kingdom of, of God in heaven and Christ's kingdom on the earth are merging together. It said a merger of heaven's angel armies with the saints' armies has begun to merge together, leading to the greatest days in church history. These angels are led by Holy Spirit and fueled by millions of prayers, decrees, and proclamations of God's word. And they are now hearkening, hearkening to bring them to pass. So a move of God is now in process. It is not a man-made move. It is a Godhead plan, and it will not be stopped. A door of heaven is open and angels are releasing to help us break down the evil barriers that we are confronting. There will come a great shaking, but don't get shook. You're a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Now, before I give you the prophetic word that was downloaded to me after I gave this dream in Memphis... Listen to these scriptures from Hebrews chapter 12. And I've been teaching you for all of June through Hebrews chapter 12. 
but, but I'm going to add some scriptures now. And uh, I'm going to, I have blended 21 translations together for you, as well as the meanings of some of the Greek words in this, because I felt that we must have a, an understanding, a definition for our time. So this is a paraphrase of that. It took me a couple hours to do this. You can thank me later. But it only take a couple of minutes, but it took me a couple of hours. Hebrews 11. Listen to this word breathed into our time specifically for July and August. Faith is the assurance, the title deed and confirmation the fundamental fact of the existence of things hoped for that are God guaranteed. Faith proclaims a trust in God's guarantee. Faith is the guarantee and the evidence of things not seen. It is the conviction of their reality. It is the foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by what we see, hear, touch, taste, or smell in the natural realm. Faith is a spiritual fact, a spiritual reality. It is our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors, setting them above the crowd in the great cloud of witnesses. So, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us and let us run the race before us with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Understand what this means. All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on in the grandstands of heaven are looking upon us with great expectancy. So we better get on with it, strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God caused him to be able to withstand anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he is there in the place of honor right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, tired and worn out from battles, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through and our great heroes of faith plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. Now, verse 25, make sure you do not turn a deaf ear to these gracious words, refusing to listen to, one, to the one who is speaking from heaven. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject and ignore the one who speaks to us from heaven. For then, from Mount Sinai, yes, his voice shook the earth. But now he has given a promise. Yet once more. There will come a yet once more. I think this is it. Yet once more. I will shake and make tremble not only the earth, but also the heavens. One last shaking from top to bottom, stem to stern, a great shaking. The phrase one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. I will shake the seen systems of the world that have been corrupted by Baal's systems 
and I will shake the unseen powers in heavenly realms. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. But know and understand, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, you are a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Since you are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, be thankful and please God by worshiping him and standing for him without fear, trembling, or any despair, confident in knowing the God who is a consuming fire is on your side, confident in his personal guarantee. Something big is God planned. And there's something happening or beginning in September that he keeps telling us about that is going to lead to reset. All right, now, the prophetic word Holy Spirit gave to me after the dream that he gave me on the plane, I gave it that night. And at the end of talking about the dream of the battering ram angels in Lafayette Park, Holy Spirit then gave me one of the most powerful prophecies that he has ever given to me that night. Um, the, the Lord said this, this is in Memphis that night, I am releasing my mighty ones to break up entrenched evils. They will strike the forever loser and his protections of diabolical root systems in America's capital and in the state capitals. Michael will release in sufficient numbers war angels to unlock this nation and break barrier walls. Cover-ups will be uncovered. You got to think again, this is a year ago. What have we seen for a year? One cover-up after the other, uncovered. Cover-ups will be uncovered. Giants taunting in opposition will fall. Strongholds of darkness will be battered, their influence shattered. My angels are merging with my people to break the forces of evil in Washington, D.C. My unshakable kingdom will rise in waves of power strategies that bring alignments to my covenant roots. Hear the sound of battering rams of my kingdom resounding against wicked strategies of Baal's systems. The abomination will not stand, says the Lord. For overwhelming might will come to bear upon covenant breakers seeking to destroy my purpose for the land. I then heard Holy Spirit say these words, and I heard them out loud in my ear there in Memphis. I heard Holy Spirit say, a war season, very fierce, will soon begin. Engage and win it with my power through prayer, decrees of faith, and worship warfare. No, an agitated spirit realm will stir violence in the natural realm. I heard that. But I will send fresh power from heaven to resource my remnant. And fresh fire will be seen upon the king's glorious, uh, of the king's glorious presence upon their altars. I will hover over them in manifest glory, radiating continued and revolving support over them. In this war season, the functioning ecclesia, my glorious church, yes, there is going to be a glorious church. He said so. He said it in the scriptures. He means what he says. In this war season, the functioning ecclesia, my glorious church, will rise to operate in higher levels of authority. Its advance will be rapid. 
Something very rapid, I believe, is, is now occurring. Rapid strikes will come against hindering spirits, government tyranny, and cultural systemic evils. The world will see the deployment of heaven's kingdom ecclesias and heaven's angel armies. This will suddenly and aggressively be revealed. It will see the fierceness of hell's battling of my kingdom will be superseded by the fierceness of my wrath against their allegiance to Baal. My fierce deployment will now engage. Fivefold ministries will engage. The saints will engage. My church will engage. My intercessors will deploy on strike missions against hell's dominion in ways and in numbers not seen before. Could that mission be? I don't even remember that till Tuesday morning when I pulled this and started looking at it. Could that be the painting of the border strategy? Because I have never seen a strategy that engaged more of God's people in the United States than that. Thousands are, do, are doing it. It's like they've got to. I've got to go here. I've got to go there. Could it be that that is the strategy that is being talked about a year ago? My intercessors will deploy on strike missions against hell's dominions in ways and in numbers not seen before. Angels of glory will deploy on their strike missions Yes, the striking power of my kingdom will activate in my war season. Do not fear the war season. Act. Do not fear the war, war season. Anticipate the victories, the Lord said. Iniquitous roots will wither under this deployment. As power and authority elevates in the king's remnant and justice is ministered righteously. The withering of hell's kingdom will be seen in indisputable ways. For the heirs of the kingdom, uh, for the heirs of kingdom authority are being seated in their places of influence and their angels are aligning with their assignments. Amazing. For the Lord of hosts makes this immutable promise. Now remember the word immutable. It means it's not changeable. You're not going to stop this. It is unchangeable, immutable. No changes. No mutations. For the Lord of hosts makes his immutable promise. I will answer hell's challenge. I will answer the world's mocking. A new breed of eager champions are hearing the sound of marching. The battle will be engaged and great victories will be wrought. Dominators are running to the battle lines. Liberators are running to the battle lines. Angels are running to the battle lines as a great aggressive faith fills my champions. I say to you, says the Lord, weariness and battle fatigue will be supercharged with supernatural strength as my glorious army now begins its move. It will break through the battlefronts of hell as I lead them and multiply my signs and wonders among them. Yes, miraculous power will reinforce them for I have determined to present myself a glorious church, not a dominated church. My champions will now move in glory surges of my presence. They will move in my power. They will move in my authority. They will move in my strategies. They will move in my wisdom. My church will move as Israel under my cloud and under 
my fire. They will move in Holy Spirit fullness. They will move in my purpose as ruling and reigning members of my body on the earth. They will move and they will be salt and they will be light that I've intended. They will move and become my Congress in their region standing for my cause. For the Lord says, as with Pharaoh in Moses' day, I will now burden hell's kingdom by multiplying my signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm starting to hear that marching sound, man. Wow. Healings that become signs will multiply. Blind eyes will see. See, my kingdom is rising. Deaf ears will hear. Hear, my government, my government's rising. Paralysis will be healed and it will prophesy my body is free to move. My body will not be paralyzed by fear. My body will run with authority through the earth. For I am not coming for a paralyzed bride. She will run. She will rejoice and claim her rightful position upon the earth. For no, says the Lord of hosts, the, the Lord of angel armies. No, says the Lord of angel armies, in this war season, the influence of my kingdom is amping up. I will amplify my voice on the earth. I will amplify the voice of my church. I will amplify the voice of my heirs, the born again ones. My gospel will be amplified. My truth will be amplified. My angels are working to amplify the efforts of my kingdom. I have issued the order, amp it up. Again, this was a year ago, July 4. In these next two months, July and August, leading into September, when great shaking leading to reset begins to accelerate somehow, and God will show us how or we'll just by faith flow with it, we are told be strong. Declare your confidence in God's guarantee, the promises that he has guaranteed to us. Something is happening that God has planned and he has not planned for any failure. Something bigs up. Last night, Saturday night, last night, um, I received this from Gina Golston. She's the one that had the dream that Dutch told us about at the hub. But I received this from her last night. And I haven't had time to go over it. To, I just printed it this morning. So you're, you'll get it as it is. Good evening. You think God isn't putting things together. He's talking to us. Good evening. I pray you guys are well. I just finished watching the hub meeting with Dutch when Dutch was there at the Oasis a couple of weeks ago. I heard the word you gave at the end of the meeting and you talked about how God will confuse the enemy's language. Now, I had come up after he preached and, and prophesied that. The enemy's, confuse the enemy's language. You alluded to the illustration of the Tower of Babel, Babel when God confused the language. This made me think of a dream the Lord spoke to me last year, July 3, 2022, the day before the dream on the airport, airplane. Pay attention. You got to go back over things. This reminded me of a dream. He spoke to me July 3, 2022, the day before this dream I just gave. I dreamed that Dutch and Tim Sheets were on a stage outdoors. There was a large crowd of people. Dutch and Tim were not preaching 
It was more like they were having a dialogue. They were discussing with each other many things that God was showing to them and the crowd was listening in on their conversation. Then at one point, Dutch called me, Gina, to the platform. He said, Gina, come up here and tell us what God is saying to you. I stepped up onto the platform and was completely taken, overtaken by Holy Spirit, like he just took control of my mouth. And, and I said, the babbling brook is about to become an, a raging river. Listen to the word, the wording, babbling, babble, babble. The babbling brook is about to become a raging river, a river of rage. Then I said, we thought we were seeing the raging river, but we've just been seeing the conversation, the planning the putting together of the evil plan. But God is about to babble the brook. And this confusing, and this confusing, this babble is going to release the river of rage. Now, my prophetic word was the babblers will turn on themselves as the shaking and reset of the Lord accelerates. This is a strategic moment. Yes, there is great agitation in the enemy's camp. They're going to rise with rage. But God is going to send confusion into the babblers. And he's not going to be stopped as his people arise with angel armies through the shaking and see a reset of this nation. Get your hopes up. God is saying, stand strong through July and August and watch me move in immutable ways to reset things for my kingdom's purpose. Something big is going on. Singers and musicians, would you come? I want to pray into this. And uh, we've got to continue to pray into this. Intercessors, get hold of this word. Begin to pray it. Pray it as you go to the borders. Pray it wherever you're at. Uh, uh, Sign to go. But let's pray for this release into the nation today. Let's pray for this prophetic word to now accelerate forward. Holy Spirit is putting things together that, that are almost blind mind blowing I I mean I sat back even this morning I said Lord this is so much this is so much but it's like he's in a hurry get it out get these words planted into the atmosphere the angels need this You're the saints need this declare it because I've got to activate things at another level Something is happening that is, I've never seen before. We're moving into a spiritual arena, a war season. Don't get shook, we're gonna win. Don't get shook, we're gonna win. Don't get shook. A glorious church is gonna rise through it. Stand if you will. Lord, today, we delivered and stated, commanded, the words again that you have given to us that prepare us for an era like we have never seen before. The reset of a nation that has transgressed against you, leaders that have blasphemed against you, systems of bail that have begun to function and operate in the nation and in the White House. But you are saying, arise and command the forward. Command my words. Speak them. Speak release. I've opened the door of heaven for angels to come and assist you. 
They will come and batter against the barrier walls that withstand you. Lord, we declare our confidence is in your guarantee, your promise that the barriers will not be too great. They will be scattered and they will be shattered. The corruption will be exposed. What is hidden in government will be exposed and it will be shattered and scattered, battered by the kingdom of Almighty God. We declare the babblers will turn and they'll begin to fight one another. Accelerate, accelerate the confusion in the camp of the adversary. They will turn on one another and begin to fight one another as you prepare us through that shaking to reset this nation. We declare, Lord, our willingness to be those who are hearing what you are saying and participating in what you are doing. We declare our willingness to stand with bold authority and declare into our nation and into our world the reset that you have designed for us. We declare there will not fail one word of all your good promise. We declare the immutable word of the Lord that you will not stop, you will not relent, you will get this done, you will use angel armies, the door is opened. We declare, Lord, our willingness to partner with the angels in our prayers and our decrees, declaring the word of the Lord in such a way that angels are mobilized in this house, in this region, in this nation, and in this world. We declare our engagement with the kingdom of God will accelerate. We declare a boldness will rise upon us to say what you say and not fear, not be intimidated in any way, shape, or form. We declare the word of the Lord will be done. Activate this word into this state. Activate it, Lord, in Indiana, Kentucky, every state in this nation. Activate this word in Washington, D.C. This house, this apostolate, this ecclesia says to angel armies what our God has told us to say. Proceed. Proceed. Proceed before us and batter down the barriers of hell. Strike the forever loser's kingdom. Strike the hidden systems of Baal. Come, Lord, we declare, we declare what you say. And we will not relent. We will not stand down. We will agree with you and your word. Accomplish your purpose. Reset this nation, making it a light a light on a hill to the world where the gospel is presented, reattached to covenant roots that begin to flourish again. We command the forward. We command the forward, the root systems to be attached. And so, Lord, we engage with you. We engage with your word. We are listening for strategies for you. We're listening for insight. And we pray, God, individually upon our lives that you would use us how you want. Take us to places at the border. Take us on assignments wherever they may be. May we be those that continue to voice, the voicers of what you say. The commanders declaring your word. May we do that individually and corporately. I pray for apostolates or ecclesia hubs all over this nation to now rise and command the words of the Lord that have been given to them for the last few years, plus the ones that they have heard from the prophets. Command them to go bear fruit. Command them into their atmospheres of their region and activate the acceleration of heaven and earth. May the song of deliverance be sung. The song of victories. The songs of revival. The songs of reformation. 
the sound, the sound of deliverance, the sound of victory be heard. May it be heard from one coast to the other, one boundary to the other. We declare, Lord, in Jesus' name. Babblers, you are bound. Babble, babblers. It's almost like you can hear when you hear them talk. It's like they're babbling. The confusion's coming to their camp. God promised. Trust the God guarantee. He doesn't give promises he can't back up he never commands us to do what cannot be done something's rising the champions are rising warriors are rising many of them in this house rising there's a pull of the Holy Spirit deep inside to make a stand now to make your stand releasing your authority Let the word of the Lord be done. Let the word of the Lord be done. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, your assignment, of course, is to pray this. Pray this word. Pray it. I'll be praying it Wednesday nights, but you pray it also. I know some of you will be listening to this so many times. Put the bullet points down and pray them, decree them. It's going to happen by the thousands of people all over this nation. This war cry is going up. Something big. Something big. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word. We will be watchmen over it. We will steward it. We will not turn our ears away from your word. Oh, we'll just keep listening for more of what you have to say. And we will release it best we can under Holy Spirit enablement. Be with these warriors in house today. Be with those that are listening in their cars, in their homes, churches, wherever they may be today. May the cry of the kingdom of God be heard from their voice. We are rising for a moment that you've prepared. Hallelujah. Bless them, resource them, rejuvenate, revive. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right. Thank you for listening with those spiritual ears today. That was a lot. But we have a short time to accomplish a lot. And we're going to. Amen. We're going to. Amen.